Support Name Explain on Patreon for $1 a month to enjoy ad-free videos, exclusive content, your name at the end of each video, as well as the chance to have your idea for a Name Explain video made into reality. Go to patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below. Luxembourg is a name of Germanic origins, simply coming from the Germanic terms of Lutilla meaning little, and Berg meaning castle slash fort, so it simply means little castle, which is actually kind of cute. It was eventually corrupted into the name of Luxembourg that we all know today. This name of Luxembourg belongs to the small nation of Luxembourg, which is just over 2,500 kilometers square in size, and has a population of around 660,000. However, this isn't the only place on our planet with the name of of Luxembourg. Another Luxembourg can be found in Europe. In fact, it is right next to the actual Luxembourg. The province of Belgium that shares its border with Luxembourg is also called Luxembourg. Like it's literally right next to it and it's simply just called Luxembourg. It's not called something like West Luxembourg or Inner slash Outer Luxembourg like we see with China's Mongolia as we talked about in a video from a few years back. Though sometimes it's referred to as Belgian Luxembourg for eases and clarity's sake. Not only is Belgium's Luxembourg right next to the actual nation of Luxembourg but it's actually bigger than the nation of Luxembourg, though far less populated. Belgium's province of Luxembourg is actually the largest province in the entire nation, whilst also being its least populated. So why does this part of Belgium have the exact same name as its neighbouring nation? Well, unsurprisingly, this part of Belgium actually once belonged to Luxembourg proper. Luxembourg is a nation known for being relatively on the smaller side, but nowhere near as small as micronations like the Vatican City or San Marino. The nation was actually somewhat larger in the past. The land area that would become Luxembourg gained independence in 963 AD when Count Siegfried exchanged his land in the Ardennes for a smaller strategically placed Roman fort in Central Europe. It was the land around this fort that formed into the modern nation of Luxembourg. And yes, it's this little fort that the country derives its name from. In the past, Luxembourg had land that now belongs to France, Germany, and of course, Belgium. However, it lost these land areas over a series of partitions. The first of these partitions happened all the way back in 1659. This was in the fallout of the Franco-Spanish War. During this time, the Duchy of Luxembourg was under Spanish rule, but with the Spanish defeated by the French, a part of southern Luxembourg that belonged to Spain was given over to France and remains French to this day. The second partition happened in 1815. Prior to this, the entirety of Luxembourg had been absorbed into the French Empire under Napoleon. But in this year, the empire was defeated and left the borders of Europe in shambles. Major European powers met at the Congress of Vienna to redraw the map of Europe in the aftermath of all this. It was here that it was decided that the northern part of Luxembourg would be given over to Prussia, which is now kind of Germany. It was this 1815 partition that paved the way to the third partition of Luxembourg in 1839. It was of course in this 1839 partition that resulted in Belgium claiming the western side of Luxembourg, which would become the Belgian province of the same name. Though this wasn't a case of Belgians snatching land from Luxembourg. In fact, this acquiring of Luxembourgish land coincided with the creation of the modern nation of Belgium. To understand this, we need to go back to 1815. As mentioned, Napoleon was defeated and Europe's borders were left in shambles. To fix the maps, new borders and states had to be formed from the land that was recently freed from French rule. Land liberated from France in 1815 included what are now the modern nations of the Netherlands and Belgium. At the Congress of Vienna in 1815, these land areas were put together to form a state called the United Kingdom of the Netherlands. Yeah, the Netherlands was kind of called the UK once too. This UK was ruled by the Dutch king at the time, William I. This UK was created to be something of a buffer zone for other major European powers. It was also in 1815, during the Congress of Vienna, that another new European state was formed too, that being the German Confederation. This Confederation was a collection of 39 German-speaking sovereign states united in language and culture, put in place to replace the Holy Roman Empire, which had dissolved a few years earlier in 1806. Seriously, Europe was a mess at this time. This confederation also included some larger German-speaking empires too, like Prussia and Austria. So in 1815, we had the newly formed United Kingdom of the Netherlands and the newly formed German Confederation. But where exactly does Luxembourg fit into all of this? Well, the Dutch economy 
kind of belonged to both of these states. Technically, Luxembourg was part of the German Confederation, which makes sense as Luxembourg is a Germanic country with their own Germanic language of Luxembourgish. However, in a land exchange between the United Kingdom of the Netherlands and the German Confederation, King William I of the Netherlands gained control over Luxembourg and it was put into a political union with the United Kingdom of the Netherlands, while still being part of the German Confederation. It's all a bit confusing to say the least. It was also at this time that William I elevated the Duchy of Luxembourg to become the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, a title that still has to this day. If you couldn't tell, 1815 was a pretty big year for European cartographers, but after some border shifting and land exchanges, things were somewhat settled. But these borders would only last for around 15 years, as in 1830, the land area of Belgium declared independence from the United Kingdom of the Netherlands in an event now called the Belgian Revolution. This revolution kicked off for a couple of reasons, one of those being the differences in culture between Belgium and those in the Netherlands, such as different religious beliefs and language. Languages. Also at this time, revolution was in the air. The French Revolution of 1830 had just taken place, and after seeing that happen, the people of Belgium too wished to be free from their Dutch rulers. They'd been under Dutch rule more or less without consent, and by now they were unhappy with that fact. Riots broke out in Brussels and spread across the land. This revolution even spilled over into Luxembourg. The people of Luxembourg were under quasi-Dutch control too and were dissatisfied with how their Dutch rulers were treating them. The Luxembourgers rioted against the Dutch in their land, claiming most of the duchy minus the all-important capital city. The Dutch tried to fight back against this rioting in Belgium, but the French came to the aid of Belgium, fending off the Dutch rulers. While the revolution was a success, the Dutch would not recognise their independence until 1839, which finally brings us back to that third partition. This third partition was part of the 1839 Treaty of London. Like with the Congress of Vienna, this was another attempt at reshaping Europe and its borders. It was at this treaty that the Dutch finally accepted Belgium's independence, thus ending the United Kingdom of the Netherlands. Another aim of this treaty was to figure out what exactly to do with Luxembourg. It was still a part of the German Confederation whilst also being under Dutch rule. The Dutch actually wanted to keep it this way but Belgian King Leopold rejected this offer. The Treaty of London finally came to the decision that Luxembourg should be shared between the two nations of Belgium and the Netherlands. The western side of Luxembourg, which amassed for over 60% of Luxembourg's entire land area and housed around half of their population, would go to Belgium, while the rest of the nation would stay under the control of the Dutch while being part of the German Confederation, as it had done before. This split fell somewhat along language lines too, as the part of Luxembourg that went to Belgium was primarily French speaking, which fitted with the French speaking southern Belgium, Wallonia. What doesn't seem to be too clear is how the actual people of Luxembourg felt about losing so much of their land. I've read conflicting reports that they were happy to give their Belgian allies the land and that they weren't too thrilled about it. Luxembourg seems to be a country that for quite a long time in its history didn't have too much control over its autonomy. Who definitely were not happy about Luxembourg losing this land though were the German Confederation. They were annoyed that they had lost such a substantial amount of land. As a make good, the Duchy of London gave the German Confederation the Duchy of Limburg from the Netherlands, but that duchy has since gone back to the Netherlands and doesn't really exist as a duchy anymore anyway. The part of Luxembourg under Dutch control however, which is the land that makes up the modern nation, would remain that way all the way until 1890. After this, it would fall into the hands of the Germans during both world wars, until being liberated in 1945. That more or less brings us up to date on the borders of the Lowlands, and of course, that part of Western Luxembourg that was given to Belgium in 1839 is that very province of Luxembourg in modern Belgium that this whole video is about. The final thing I'm left thinking about is why didn't this province end up with a new name? Like the parts of Luxembourg that were partitioned to France and Germany aren't still called Luxembourg. Why don't we give the Belgian Luxembourg a more unique name like West Luxembourg or South Wallonia or just something unique entirely? The capital of Belgium's Luxembourg is called Arlon. Why don't we just name it that? There are many other instances on our globe where provinces are named after their biggest cities. But I guess if Belgium's Luxembourg had a completely different name, we wouldn't ended up with this video. Also, I've said Luxembourg way too many times now.
Name Explained depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon. So a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explained videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explained or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.